What's going on, guys? It's your boy Andy Dang, aka Certified on Instagram. This is episode 153 of True Decide. You're natural. What's going on, everyone? And welcome to <laughs> True Two Size. We are a weekly podcast centered around the wild world of sneakers. I will be your host today. My name is Lawrence Hopkins, and I am joined by the rest of the quarantine team at Canada Got Soul, Mr. Joel Hernandez. Yes, sir. Mr. Alvin Martinez. Yo. And. Okay. Okay, more bars. Let's go. <laughs> used to go by Certified Shot. And that refers to both his photos and his jumper. Ooh, Drives a really fast car. Okay. Drives a really fast car. So get used to seeing that rear bumper. Okay. 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 The only, <laughs> <laughs> the only guest who's allowed to wear Nike socks with Adidas shoes. <laughs> call him Andy Dang. Call him certified. But call him Marcus's dad, too. Hey. hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. Andy, yes, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. As we mentioned, long time coming. Uh, you did mention this is your fir- first podcast, so we are honored. We're uh, glad we could pop your cherry. It's It's been a long time coming. You're <laughs> 30 at least, so you should have had your cherry pop before this, but at least it, it finally <laughs> arrived for you, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, I try, to be, I try to be secretive, but, you know, it's, just, it, it's about time. You're not doing anything yeah. anyways, right? You're sitting at home quarantining, lockdown 3.0 now, so you might as well. Yeah, when you asked me, yeah, you're like, uh, what are you doing? Uh, I know it's kind of last minute, but what are you doing tomorrow at like 7.30? I'm like, let me check my schedule. I'm still quarantining from, <laughs> from <laughs> 9 to 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. <laughs> yeah, I think I could squeeze you in there. <laughs> well, yeah. Nonetheless, we appreciate it, and we've got a great show for you guys today. We're going to fly through our regular segment so we can get down and dirty with Andy. We've got a fire round question from a familiar face, some huge CGS related news to announce, and we're going to once again talk food in this week's NSR. Then it's Andy's first time here, so he gets to play our favorite game, 21 Gestions, and our newest game, Joel. How much is that? Before we get to know his sneaker life m- more with his soulography, then we're going to learn all about his many Instagram endeavors, how he got started on his way to social media domination, and what it's like running a clothing brand in 2021. And we also want to know if he continues to keep wearing Adidas socks and Nike shoes and the reverse <laughs> in 2021. We're going to get all the information for everybody this episode. But first, Alvin. <sighs> Fire round. Yes, the fire round. We like to start every show with a quick hitting question from you, our listeners. And this week's question, conveniently enough, comes from Alvin Quincy Martinez. (laughs) (laughs) Way to make it seem like we have absolutely no listeners, Alvin. (laughs) So (laughs) so we we did forget to mention this uh, after we came back from our Christmas break. But uh, Jerry Lorenzo actually kind of jumped ship a little bit. And he's now left the swoosh and after a lengthy partnership mind you um and he's joined adidas he's going to be their new creative business head of the basketball edition uh division sorry but alvin wants to know what do you think of the jerry lorenzo trade to the three stripes what will it do and do you think it will even have an impact um so alvin it was your question so i'm going to give you the honors of going first and we'll kind of all bounce off you so go ahead Cool, man. Um, I personally think it's going to do huge for Addy. Uh, they're probably going to give him all the freedom in the world, like the same thing they did with Kanye. But you can already see like all the loyal, fear of God, wearers, like lovers, like you can already see them like jumping ship or like already like rock, like they pro- they were probably crazy swoosh heads before, but now they're going to hop over to three stripes. And like I already see it in some big names on YouTube, like. They're like, oh man, I brought out my uh, my Yeezy, like OG Yeezy 700s or whatever, because of Lorenzo. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, so you can already see it, and like the stuff that he's gonna come out with, you know, everyone's gonna love it. Um, I mean, a lot of people liked his his basketball stuff for Nike, so I don't see any anything different aside from his freedom of you know being able to design whatever he wants. Uh, so he's just gonna bring bangers, I I would assume, or I hope. Yeah, I'm kind anyway. of. Uh... I'm kind of interested to see, like, they say that he's going to be the head of, like, the creative, what was it, the, his 
business creative business head of Adidas basketball. So I want to know if that involves like actual design, like it would be him designing the Fear of God one with Nike, or if it'll be like him coaching the other designers who are designing the the Adidas basketball line. Because I feel like it could go either way. I think if you come out with a shoe that is Jerry Lorenzo designed for Donovan Mitchell, we'll say, and it's branded like Jerry Lorenzo has a fear of God insult something, it's going to sell. I think it needs that branding a little bit more than it just needs like Jerry Lorenzo had his hands on this. I think it needs more than just that attached to it personally. Um, But I think in the long run, this is great for Adidas. Like at some point, people are going to have to start switching to Adidas because they're just stealing everybody. Like at some point, they're going (laughs) to have the entire entertainment and sports world in their court. So at some point, you're going to have to admit um, that they've got some cool shit. So I think it's great Mm -hmm. for Adidas. Um, It just adds even more parity to to the sneaker market, which is awesome. Like you want to see competition because competition breeds cool stuff coming out. Um, So yeah, I'm down with it. Like Nike always has something coming up next. So I'm sure they had an idea that Jerry was going to leave and they were already prepared for it. So don't be surprised if Nike has some sort of clap back or something really strong coming up just to kind of make you forget that he left. But yeah, I'm down with it. I think it's cool. Joel, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, just like you guys said, like um, it's it's a good thing for for the street for the three stripes, you know. It, it boosts like you know their followers from the fear of God guys. Like they all they're all just gonna follow suit. Like wherever he goes, it's a, sort of like a bandwagon kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like just like with LeBron, like LeBron jumped ship to like you know whatever team, and then you know, everybody became the Miami Heat fans. Like you know what I mean? So it's like wherever he goes, it's it's like you know the followers. It's like a Pied Piper, pretty yeah. much, the modern day. So it's like, it's it's gonna it's gonna cause like a big stir. Obviously, um, you know, it's it's pretty legit. Didn't he get like three stripes tattooed on the back of his neck? Yeah, I don't know if that was real or not, but that was cool. It was a cool like. <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, think, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think that's real. I was gonna say, that's that love, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's the real. That's a huge L. <laughs> <laughs> I think, honestly, before I I let Andy get to it, I think the coolest thing for me is that Jerry and Kanye are back on the same team. I think that's going to bring some really cool stuff. Like, I know Mm -hmm. Yeezy has already started with their basketball stuff. So if he can get a Jerry Lorenzo Yeezy Nike, or uh, sorry, Adidas basketball shoe, like, bro, it's over. That'd be crazy, man. It's over. That'd be crazy. Um, But Andy, what are you thinking here? Mr. Yeezy rotation himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think unpopular opinion. I think it's, it's a bad call. No, no I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I will, I will, I will oppose just a little bit though. I think that obviously, you know, in a business sense, it is a good move because they're just adding another big name to the roster. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think it's gonna have the effect that people think it's gonna have. Like you know, bringing a Kanye over there is like it's like a huge, massive change that really, really impacted the sneaker community and like Adidas. I think bringing someone like Jerry isn't isn't exactly going to have anywhere anywhere near that impact that Kanye had. Mm-hmm. I think with Jerry, it's like you know, obviously his he had all the celebrity backing, and you know, a lot of his stuff was curated and became popular through hype. And I feel like a lot of his footwear was like really hype, just you know, through collaborations. And I feel like mm-hmm. you know, maybe the first sneaker he makes with Adidas, that first collaboration is going to be super hype. It feels like oh shit, that's like that's the first piece that I get that. But I just feel like when you move from like like when it's basketball sneakers like i don't think adidas has basketball sneakers like nike has basketball sneakers yeah they don't have, know, the, like they nike don't have has, the, yeah. the thing to the vault to pull from yeah not, not only that but like nike sneakers nike basketball sneakers some of them you can actually wear casually yeah and oh, honestly yeah. just looking at adidas basketball sneakers i don't really see a lot maybe maybe that's mm, where his not yet where he's gonna yeah, change things yeah. maybe he'll come in and he'll make the basketball sneakers look more visually appealing for people to rock them casually but I just don't think that it's going to have the same. Like it's, it, well, I think everyone will agree it won't have the same impact as like what Yeezy did. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be as good as everyone thinks it might be. You know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? No, that's fair. That's just my that's opinion. On it. Yeah, I definitely yeah. agree. It's not going to be the same Yeezy effect. Nothing, nothing is the Yeezy effect except for Kanye. But I, mm-hmm. I yeah. definitely see. Like, man, he had people rocking Vans. This guy had people rocking like. Remember when the Fear of God Vans came out? Those were like the sh- people were paying a thousand dollars for Vans eras and authentics. Like he had yeah. he had everybody in like the pants with the long drawstrings. Like he has 
a pretty big yeah. like polarizing um, like he pulls people around wherever he's going so like you said though it's not the same as comedy. again a lot of it a lot of it is easy to wear stuff though yeah. like you know yeah. like yeah. the central's line or even like the original fear of god line is all really just it's essentially just basics but just with high quality base that anyone can rock yeah and right. then with the shoes those collaborations like yeah you know it's got people rocking vans like vans are Bands are like, you know, it's like a staple piece for a lot of people. It's such a simple, simple shoe that you add the fear of God running on it. It's like, oh shit, that's pretty dope. But like, it's it's one thing to do it to a really, like an Air Force One or like a, a Vans that's like, like really easy to rock versus a Adidas basketball shoe. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I mean, I'm curious to see what's no, going to happen. Yeah, and that. it could be cool yeah. because it'll be his mo- easily his most challenging collaboration. Like, Adidas basketball has been struggling for years now so this is easily his most yeah. challenging collaboration this will be hard, the hardest thing he's had to work on um so we'll see yeah. we'll see what we'll see what comes of it i'm i'm very interested to see what comes of it i think it'll be cool yeah. though. um if you would like to submit a question for the fire round and have us answer it on the pod please shoot us a message on instagram or email us at canada got soul at gmail.com next up is the cgs picks each week we all pick an upcoming sneaker to analyze dissect and give our thoughts on then we decide if it's poop scoop whoop de whoop or alvin's trademark phrase say très joli super cute and in, in in anglais um so anglais. i'm gonna go first because i have the brightest sneaker this week and that's why i'm gonna go first my pick this week for once actually for the first time this year obviously but for the first time in a while it's a new balance sneaker and it's the sneakers and stuff 920 uh by new balance <laughs> and obviously sneakers and stuff so these really give me like the salehi bembry vibes of like the the collaboration from last year that hit really well people loved that shoe it's a predominantly like burnt orange upper with uh like a sail off white midsole and then you have like forest green hits with the yellow tongue branding um all of those colors that i just listed are all my favorite colors <laughs> so i really like this shoe i love the look of it um New Balance has been killing it as Sean Go. I'm not even going to give the shout out to Sean Go. You know what Sean Go says about New Balance. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like these, man. They're made in England. So the quality is outrageous. You've got the sneakers and stuff, uh, Dubre on the laces, uh, for the collaboration. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm a big fan of these. There's not much to say. Um, the collaboration drops this week or tomorrow, actually. So yesterday when you're listening to this, um, but yeah, I'm down with these. They're, they're super cute because I know the price tag is going to be up there. I'm not sure if they're getting a North American release. So that means even harder to get and higher prices, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down, super down. I like these a lot. Um, Joel, what do you got? All right. So what I got is, um, is another blast from the past. So they say it's the 3M Air Force One Snake. Yes, that's uh, right. It's yeah, it's it, it first dropped back in the early 2000s, um, and it's coming back again um, as a quick strike. Um, it's come on, man, 3M. Like you know what I mean. So it's like <laughs> the heel counters 3M, the toe caps 3M, um, the the eye stays are all in 3M, the metallic 3M, the black underlays. You got your snakeskin swoosh, another classic. Um, yeah, January 28th, super cute. I'm going to try to get them. Um, you know me and my Air Force Ones nowadays. But, yeah, 130 U.S., probably going to be like one, 170, 165 Canadian, something like that. Uh, January 28th, which is a Thursday. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep it unlocked. But, yeah, that's man, a, super, super cute. That's a big comeback for that shoe. That's a big Yeah, man. Huge, huge. Crazy good shoe. Um, Alvin, what do you got? I got the uh, Air Jordan 3 women's exclusive rust pink. I love it. Nice. Yeah, man. Yo, you guys already know I love my pink, man. And if I could cop these, I would. But it's just that full suede upper. And it's got that hint of red. And then it's got like the clear outsole. And it's just, it's pink, man. It's pink. It's beautiful. (laughs) <laughs> I, I really want them but i can tell you i'll buy it for you don't worry i'll let you live but, through me yeah because straight up like they're they're not like my my size 11 foot is not going to fit in a size 12 women's so uh these are going to be a super cute plus i want to leave them for the ladies because they all deserve that women's exclusive for real shoes uh but man i might even try to cop a pair of these for for like kaya when she's older or something because they're beautiful as f so i don't know we'll see 
Great shoe. I almost picked that shoe, but I left it for you because I knew you would like it. Um, <laughs> Andy, bring us home. What do you got for us? Uh, so the, the sneaker that I chose, I've actually been seeing this all over my feed in the last like two weeks. Uh, so it's kind of like, you know, added to the thirst of wanting to get these shoes. But uh, uh, it's, a, it's a Jordan 1. I'm a big fan of Jordan 1s. I like colorways that are kind of just easy to rock. Sometimes just, you know, simple is good. Uh, just yeah. as long as the quality isn't trash. Sometimes it's a hit or miss with ones, but I feel like as of late, it's been pretty pretty good. Uh, the one I chose is actually the upcoming, uh, it's a, the OG High, Hyper Royal, Light Smoke Gray. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yes, yes, they're yes, the yes. ones that look, they're like, they're essentially like the Turbo Greens, yeah. but blue. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So when the, Turbo, when the Turbo Greens came out, I thought they were pretty dope. Just the color is, just, again, for me, I've told you before, it's like, I, I have five shoes that I can actually wear and not just sit, you know, in a, in a, in a box or in, on the, in the closet or whatever, but with these here because uh, because of the blue, definitely see myself rocking those with jeans. So uh, definitely looking forward to that. I think it's supposed to be dropping uh, sometime in spring of this year. I like those a lot. Yes. Yeah, those yes. are sexy. Those a lot, a lot. Yeah, that's a great Super pick. clean. Great shoe. All right, good picks all around. Next up, mm-hmm. this week in Kicks, this is the part of the show where we discuss the current headlines and happenings in the world of sneakers. And there's a couple things that happened this last week. But we're going to save them till next week because there's only one thing that matters. Um, and that's there's some big CGS news to announce. And obviously, this is technically old news because you guys are listening to this on Saturday. And the news we're talking about happens tomorrow, a.k.a. yesterday, a.k.a. January 15th, if that's confusing. Um, but we have officially redone our website. We were on just WordPress before and it was just a blog format. It is now officially a Shopify. Um, so you can go and check out all of our stuff. Um, this means we can now do merch drops. Like, I don't know if there's a percentage point of how much easier it will be to do merch drops on Shopify rather than two hundred percent. Like, this is not two thousand. Oh, much easier. Yeah, hundred percent. This is not two thousand one anymore. We are not going to do email ordering anymore. This is not call <laughs> in and give us your information. This is a lot easier. It's Shopify. You all know how it works. Um, but yeah, so it's easier for us. It's easier for you as well. Um, it should be easier for everyone to get our stuff because it's been issues in the past. Um, but by now you've seen that we dropped our grand opening 5950 snapback in honor of the, the opening of the website. Um, so congratulations to anybody who got it and congratulations if you were able to get it because they were semi limited. Um, but we've also got some other stuff stuff coming up in case you missed it. So like I said, it'll be a lot easier for us to, to do releases now. Um, so we're going to do more releases now. Easy. <laughs> um, so once again, thanks for the support. Um, we're so excited for what's coming this year because we got lots of shit coming up. Um, you guys can't see us right now, but me and Joel and Alvin this weekend are already wearing um, some of the stuff coming up. We just can't show you just yet. You'll probably see it on Sunday, I think. We'll start showing some sneak previews. Yeah. Once yeah. we get the website drop out of the way, um, we'll start previewing some stuff we got coming up. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody who purchased stuff yesterday slash tomorrow slash january 15th next up previously in kicks this is the part of the show where we discuss the current headline wait what the hell did i just do why does that say that that's not right previously in kicks this is the part of the show where we review our latest pickups and recap the latest happenings in our sneaker lives i was literally looking at it and reading something else that doesn't make any sense um so only pickup for me in the last week so I feel really upset because I hate Instagram ads. They're just really annoying, but I always fall for them. And I fell for an Instagram ad from The Gap. They posted, and now as I'm talking about it out loud, I'm sure I'm going to get a ton more. But I was being targeted for some reason by The Gap, and specifically The Gap plaid pants so i caved because they had like a black Friday or boxing day sale or whatever so they had like these made in italy like really nice chinos that were like 50 off and then 40 off of that um so i picked up those and then i got the ad again i guess because i fell for it and i went back and i bought another pair so i bought two pairs of pants from the gap um the quality is sick so if you if you want to check them out i don't know what they're actually called but go check out the gap um, this is not a paid advertisement from the gap. The gap paid to advertise to me and it worked. So I'm going to pay it forward, <laughs> pay it forward for them. But, uh, yeah, I, I'll post them at some point cause I'm really happy with them. They're really cool. Um, Joel, any pickups for you in the last little while? <clears throat> no, that's a negative, negative, a negative captain. Um, Alvin, anything for you? Yeah, man, my boxing day shit came in. So mm-hmm. I got the lemonade Air Max ones that Queer Joel influenced me to to cop. Nice, nice. Uh, I got two pairs of ZX eight thousands, and I got Sash some boosts. 
And then I got North Face gloves, which are clutch. Because the gloves that I have were Nike. And then with the Nike gloves, like, my finger never touched the end. So it was, it was always, like, yeah. you know that extra, like, glove? And I hated that shit. Yeah. Whereas these North Face gloves, man, they fit, like, a glove. Like, a wow. proper glove. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder what that's like. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yo, that's it. That's all. I'm, so, I'm so mad at that <laughs> stupid dad joke about the glove fitting like a glove. So <laughs> um, Andy, any pickups in the last little while for you? I actually just grabbed a pair of shoes, like literally just unboxed them and posted it to my story before hopping on this podcast. But uh, basically, I posted to my story last week that I was looking for the, um, the Dunk Lowe's SBs, the Chicago colorway. Mm. And uh, one oh. of my followers, like, like I mentioned before, one of my followers... Uh, well, a bunch of followers have hit me up and said, hey, actually, I have it for you, but I just, whoever gave me the best price, I just bought it from them. And uh, they shipped it to me. I just opened it up. Super clean shoe. Definitely going to be rocking that uh, pretty often. Oh, as often as I can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that's that's just a solid shoe to have in the rotation. I don't know if there's anything too, too special, but uh, like two weeks ago, I picked up the the upcoming Trophy Room 1. That's an interesting Oh, one. yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's I saw solid. that too. He really, Ooh, like, yeah. he was like, I'm not confident enough in just telling them that I picked up the Chicago Dunk. I have to make sure <laughs> that I let them know. <laughs> I don't buy GRs that often, guy. I've also bought shoes that are coming out in a month, just in case anyone's wondering. How are, Honestly, the, uh, though, uh, how are they, though? How are the trophy rooms? Uh, the stitching quality is trash. Oh. The shoe looks good from afar. The shoe looks oh. good when it's, on, when it's on foot or when you hold it with your hand fully extended. <laughs> <laughs> when, you look at shoe, when you look at a shoe up close, honestly, the craftsmanship is pretty bad. Wow. Uh, it, honestly, mm. at first, I, I thought maybe I, maybe this is like an AliExpress pair. <laughs> no, they're, they're legit. My source, my source of these shoes is, is 100% legit. I, I, I know I know. there's a lot of like controversy behind this shoe and like where the real pairs are coming out from and, you know, how, how the hell did people get these shoes before the actual owner of the store get them? Uh <laughs> I can't say where I got my my pair from, but I know for a fact my pair is 100% legit just because of who it came from. Uh, yeah. But I mean, the shoe, honestly, when you when you put the it's a Chicago colorway. Uh, I had to have it because it's it's the Chicago colorway. It's just super classic to me. And yeah. I know the value of that's gonna go up like crazy. So even though I had to pay a little bit more because it's an early pair, I didn't mind because they're reselling now for like five to seven thousand yeah. Canadian, which yeah. is insane. Damn, and the thing is, they'll probably drop when they when they drop the price will probably you know plummet for a bit and then it'll probably come back up to that four or five thousand dollar Canadian range anyway yeah. just because it's a you know it's a Chicago colorway it's a it's a collab and it's numbered it's numbered yeah twelve thousand yeah, twelve thousand yeah. pairs numbered so I think yeah it's more rare than the off white Chicago one yeah you know huh. so I think in the long run I mean I, that, that's not why I'm buying it really to hold it and resell it anyways and I'm really reselling my stuff but. It's definitely a shoe that I wanted to have. It's one of those standout shoes that you can, you can flex every once in a while, but truly disappointed in, in the actual quality of the shoe. Uh, some people don't like it when they look at it up close. It's kind of like glittery. It's kind of like shiny. Yeah. But when you have it when you have it on foot and you look at it, it looks like it's like a vintage washed out pair, which is really, That's really sick. cool. It's a really yeah. cool yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. That you don't see in the pictures that you know when you see people post it online until you see them like, in person, you know, a little bit from a distance. They actually look pretty, pretty dope. But just yeah. fishing. And, and, and it's not just my pair. I've seen so many pairs from other people that are known to be getting early pairs that are, you know, most likely legitimate. You can never really comment on whether it's legitimate or not, but the people that I'm seeing with them, they usually get early pairs and it's usually legit. So I looked at their stitching and honestly, some of the stitching is just huh. bad. <laughs> wow. Damn. Yeah, you really listed, like, the exact recipe for, like, yeah, this is an expensive shoe. Like, Chicago colorway, collab, and also yeah. numbered. Like, it's literally, they, they took a yeah. sprinkle of everything that makes a shoe hype, and they all put it all into one sneaker. So, yeah, that's a, that's a oh, yeah. great-looking shoe. That's so cool. Really cool-looking shoe. Yeah. Um, next up, thumbs up, thumbs down. In this part of the show, we give our opinion on various sneaker-related topics with zero context or discussion. All we're allowed to say is thumbs up or thumbs down. I'm going to say that again for Andy. Just thumbs up or thumbs down. That's it. Nothing else. <laughs> this week is Jordan Six Rings. The Jordan Six, the Team Jordan, Jordan Six Rings. Joel. Down. Oh, Alvin. Way up. I'm also thumbs up. I'm not way up, but I'm thumbs up. Um, Andy. Down. 
Oh man. We... <laughs> what if it was a Chicago Lit. colorway? Anyways, never mind. Um... <laughs> Way up. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, NSR. We talk about sneakers a lot. So in this weekly segment, we're going to take 30 seconds-ish out of the show to discuss something completely irrelevant to the world of sneakers. And uh, as we do during the NSR segment, it's going to be food once again. It should really just be the now it's a food segment segment. But uh, I feel like this one might ruffle some feathers. So I just want to brace myself for the, the internet hate that I may receive with the answer that I'm going to give. But uh, I feel like everyone has this. What's a food that everyone seems to like that you think is not that good or overrated or you're not really a fan of? Everyone has that thing. I feel like everyone's like, oh, yeah, you like that. Oh, I, yeah, sure. I like it. Like everyone really hypes it up. And you're kind of just like, meh. I'll go first while you guys think. And I feel like mine is going to be the most upsetting for people. So I'm going to go first so you guys don't look like as bad as me. But my answer, honestly, I don't really like lasagna that much. I realized the other day. (laughs) I realized the other day I'm not a huge lasagna person. I like noodles, obviously. I like pasta. I like pasta sauce. I like cheese. For some reason, it's okay if it's separate. It's okay if the noodles are a different shape. I like, that's weird because I like the crusty corners of lasagna. Those are my favorite part of lasagna, the crusty part. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not a huge lasagna person. <laughs> I noticed every single person's face here was like, oh, fuck, we might as well just leave. Um, but uh, all right, so I'm glad I went first. Joel, what's a food that you oh, aren't shit. a big fan of that is popular <laughs> most of the time? Popular? Oh, shit. I don't know, man. Um, I'm going to have to say, I don't know. I was going to say liver because I hate liver, man. But <laughs> no one likes liver. <laughs> I know. So you're going to have to get back to me. Okay, we'll, get I'll back go to Andy. <laughs> we'll get back to you. Uh, Alvin, what about you? Bro, you're, you're asking the worst person. I love food, bro. <laughs> I know. I'm going to say salad. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone likes salad, but Alvin. <laughs> I feel like this just turned into a segment of me venting about how lasagna is not that good. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, Andy, is there a food that you aren't a huge fan of that everyone else seems to really like? Honestly, I don't. I don't think so. I'm I'm pretty easy when it comes to food. If I have to, if I have to like think about like an actual like, I talk like a whole food group or just something in food that people tend to like that I don't like. Maybe it's like like pineapples on pizza or some shit like. You guys like that or no? I don't like that at all. Oh my god! You guys like that? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't like that. I don't see the appeal of that at all. Wow. I just don't think it. I don't think it belongs. Andy, Andy is not aware that this is a pineapple on pizza podcast. He's not. Aware. <laughs> um, you guys have spoken about this before. <laughs> we, often, you will see. Um, <laughs> Uh, Joel, give me one. Give me something that you're not a huge fan of that everyone else okay. seems to be a fan of. Okay, now when Cuzzle said salad, I just realized it's that it's the leafy salad that I don't like. You know the salad that looks like it's coming from the trees and stuff? Spinach. You know the leaves? Spinach? No, it looks like leaf. It looks like a leaf. <laughs> like a, That's probably a just leaf. a salad made of leaves. Yeah, I think you were, <laughs> yeah. you were bamboozled at some point. <laughs> <laughs> this is not vinaigrette. <laughs> But yeah, I don't like that that leafy looking one. The one that looks like it's plucked from a bush. I don't like that shit. This is very yeah. this is a very sappy salad. <laughs> All right. Oh, next shit. up, errors, edits, and e-messages. E E E. We're pretty smart guys, but from time to time we make mistakes. So if you catch us slipping, hit us in the DM and we'll let the world know that we goofed. Um Ryan Grant, so he actually just sent this over. This is mad interesting. He says, So I just went through it and maybe made a minor error or two somewhere. However, according to the release information provided by the homie J23. Jordan Brand released a couple of Jordan 1s in 2020. Do you guys want to guess how many pairs of Jordan 1s came out in 2020, including women's, kids, high, low, mid? How many pairs of Jordan 1s do you think came out in 2020? Because Rushy Grant did the information search, and he found it out. Joel, give me a ballpark a lot. What do you think, Joel? I'm going to say, like, 60. Alvin, what do you think? 69. <laughs> Nice. Andy, what about you? I'll say 40. 40. You guys are all incredibly wrong. The the closest was Alvin, 
The correct number is 114. (laughs) 114. So he broke it down even further, and he says it was 23 pairs of highs, including women's highs, 22 pairs of men's mids, 31 pairs of women slash kids mids, 22 lows, and 16 low women's or kids. And plus two pairs of airships, if you want to include that in, like, the one before the one. Oh, um, airships, yeah. that's just crazy that that was just his EEE. that was just some information but like that's that's nuts i had no idea it was over 100 pairs do you think that jordan one is a popular silhouette holy shit um <laughs> the next comes from a uh, good homie of the show it's bryant k it's bryant k and he says mm-hmm. yo i'm hella glad the pod is back two weeks without it was too much um he says regarding the nsr from the last podcast um, the NSR, for anybody who didn't remember, is last week we asked, Andy, we'll ask you to, when do you stop saying Happy New Year? It's now like January 14th. When do you stop saying Happy New Year when you see people? Now that we're seeing I think it depends. I, I, think, I, think, I think just in January. In January, if I haven't seen you in January and I see you, I'll say Happy New Year. But if it's February, then it's too late. <laughs> I do want to point out for all the listeners, Andy did not say Happy New Year when he jumped on the podcast. So he, he is a liar. Anyways. Next. <laughs> Brian, you got me. <laughs> Brian says, I honestly have no idea what the right answer should be, but I can tell you that I'm getting tired of hearing it. He said he works at a cannabis dispensary and maybe the first day or two of hearing happy new year was nice and cute but by mid last week i was over it i definitely got a ton of regulars pulling the i'll see you next year joke on uh the 31st it's because they're high bro. yeah they're high as fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't remember what day it is yeah, bro. Exactly. Like- <laughs> they literally thought like i'll see you in a year bro like <laughs> Um, so thank you to uh, Ryan and Brian for that. But it's now the moment you've all been waiting for. We're going to get started diving deep into Andy Dang. Pause. Um, <laughs> um, but we're going to start getting to know him with 21 questions. Andy, how this works is I'm going to give you 21 questions. Similar to, you know, when you and Maruna started dating through like MSN and you were like, yo, do you want to play 21 questions? And you were like. You know the last question is like inappropriate, but uh, this oh, yeah. is this is mostly appropriate. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you 21 right. questions. Just give me the first answer that comes to mind. Are you ready? Sure. Yeah. Good. All right. Question number one: Air or boost? Air. Question number two: Crew socks or no shows? Crew. Question number three: Red or blue? Red. <laughs> question number four: Pineapple on pizza. Ooh. Hell no. <laughs> it's like, he it's knew. like yes. Yeah. <laughs> Question number five. What is the most comfortable sneaker that you own? Mm, I would say Tur- Turtle Dump 350. I had a feeling you were going to say cool. that. You wear that shoe every yeah. single day. Question, <laughs> Question with Nike socks. With Nike socks, yeah. Nike yeah, socks. Only with exactly. Nike socks. <laughs> Question yeah. number six. Glow in the dark or 3M? Yeah. Question number seven. Favorite character from The Office? Michael Scott. Question number eight. One new pair of shoes for you or three new pairs for Marcus? Three for Marcus. Question number nine. Dunks or Jordan 1s? Jordan 1s. Question number 10. What is the largest planet in our solar system? Saturn. Jupiter. I don't know. No. Question. Like, well, is that, am, am I close? I don't know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I have the right <laughs> answer and only the right answer. <laughs> I don't Does anyone the, know? No one knows. I don't have the list of all the planets in front of me. Maybe it's definitely <laughs> right. a planet. Um, question number. <laughs> question number eleven. What sneaker do you wear the most? I think you already mentioned it. No, I didn't actually oh, okay i think i wear wave runners the most, actually. oh wave runners okay i apologize yeah i thought it was the turtle because i walk the dog three times a day so i just put wave runners on that's just a small small little flex um question number 12 <laughs> um what is the most expensive sneaker that you own that you've paid for you don't have to say the price but you can just tell us the shoe Yours, the sure. Dior Jordan the high, one. The high, the high tops, yeah. Um, question number thirteen: If you buy something for thirty-eight thirty-five and pay with forty dollars, what is your change? Thirty-eight thirty-five. Yeah. Thirty-eight thirty-five. My change. A dollar and 
Wow, you're you're that was the fastest ever. That was so good. You could work at Metro. Really? <laughs> 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 Metro. I used to work at Law Boss. There you go. Oh, there there you, you go. go. Customers <laughs> just had to wait a couple seconds, but he hold yeah. on. <laughs> hold on there, yeah. sir. One second. <laughs> um question number fourteen. What is your biggest sneaker W? Biggest sneaker W, uh Jordan Ones. Jordan Ones. Yeah. Honestly, I, I don't remember the last time I took a W. I never I never I never hit on anything ever. I it's a, always do do That's a, <laughs> it's that's very a big sad. mood. That's a huge mood, don't worry. <laughs> no, honestly, yeah, honestly, I have I've never I've never actually hit on any sneaker that's notable. Ever. Ever. I think mm. my biggest win was that I was able to, I got hooked up with a pair of off white Chicago's for six hundred dollars. A week after they dropped. That's a big a friend of mine still. That's good. Yeah. Man. yeah. A friend of mine had them. He's like, hey, I'll, I'll give you 600 US. So it was about like, I don't know. At the time, it was like 900 Canadian. I was like, oh, man, I want to pay 900 Canadian for, for a pair of shoes. Like, I hate paying resale. I, I buy it to wear it, not, you know? And then I was like, whatever. I was, you know, Chicago colorway is the off white. It's the one shoe out of the 10 I need to have the most. Yeah. I'm like, whatever. I'll, I'll do it. And then turns out now, it's like, it's the most expensive one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it was and a I post, post dated sneaker W. Um, yeah, yeah. Question number 15 What is the capital city of Nova Scotia? Nova Scotia? Um, New Brunswick? That's a never no province. Um, <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> Halifax is the correct answer. Oh, yeah. I, I knew that. I knew that. I'm, I knew that. I, you definitely knew that. Yeah, we'll, we're sure you did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> question number 16 What is 43 times 12? Oh my God! Forty-three times twelve. I have absolutely no idea. Five hundred and sixteen. In case you were wondering, Damn. how many Asians do you have on these shows? That you're paying these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Question number seventeen: What is the last shoe you purchased for yourself? Oh, you mentioned it. Uh, the yeah, the Chicago SBs. Question mm. number eighteen: What is twelve times forty-three? What's all the math questions? It's the same question. Oh, it's, oh, it's the same one. Okay, 500 and something. <laughs> still, still couldn't remember it. 516. No. <laughs> question number 19. What is your favorite Jordan model above the AJ14? Above 14s, I would say... That's an interesting one. I would say... The 17s. When they, when they, mm. when they came out, I used, I used to work at... A, at, at uh, champs in at Yorkdale, and when they came out, they had that metal briefcase. Yeah. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So uh, cool. outside of those, fifteens like look like bananas to me. Sixteens <laughs> uh, are sixteens look too much like like I don't know. They look too basketball like like for me. Nineteens like you have some snakes on your feet, and then after nineteen, <laughs> I, like, I feel like they really like they really kind of went crazy after after nineteen. Twenty they're you know, a little bit wild with that strap, and then I think seventeen is just the seventeen. If you actually look at it carefully, it's not. It's like it's a, it's a basketball shoe, but it's not super super like you can still pull those off with some certain joggers. Oh yeah, shoes, absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah. They're not as bulky as the uh, the other pairs. Easily, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, question number twenty: What is your number one? Imagine pair? I didn't know. What would you do? What would you have done if I didn't know? <laughs> I was just like, I would just expect uh, you to say a number. <laughs> like, <laughs> you only have a like, couple to choose from. <laughs> I'll say like seventeen, but can you explain why? It's like, ah, uh, it's a nice shoe, you know. <laughs> My favorite is the Dior. Hello, That's nice. the, <laughs> yeah. Dior is my favorite. My favorite, my favorite player is Dior. That's yeah. why I bought this shoe. <laughs> Michael Dior. Michael Dior. <laughs> Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> Question number twenty. What is your number one grail? The number one grail, I would say, are the LeBron Eight South Beach. Ooh. Okay. I feel like I knew that. Would you rather, yeah. question number 21, would you rather receive your number one grail or three other pairs from your top 10? Um, I would say, well, I already have my grail. So like, true. What kind of question is this? This is yeah, a terrible true. question. You're not, you're, not supposed to, you're not supposed to own your number one grail. You're not supposed to. Okay, so you don't own it. Okay, so if I don't own it, then yes, I would take the grail over top. Okay. Top, to me at the top 10 for sure. Think you need the pair Marcus. Figuratively, yeah, for Marcus, yeah, get a pair for Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, I don't think they, they, I don't think they'll exist in baby size. They might. They're coming back out this year, so maybe they'll. Yeah, Yeah, I've seen that. Oh man, that kind of hurts me that they're coming back, but it's all good. Whatever. You can double up now, double, triple, whatever. All right. I feel, I feel like the hype for those isn't the same anymore, though. No, it's not. No, yeah, I I feel like back when they first came out, they were like one of the few sneakers that were really like 
crazy looking that everyone's yeah. like, holy shit, like those are those are so funky. You mm-hmm. know, like I, I what drew me to them with the, with the color, it was just so funky, like the green with like the like a turquoise green with like pink laces. Like yeah. Shit, back then, like now when you have pink laces or pink shoes like Travis Scott, it's like, oh shit, they're cool. It's Another day, pink yeah. shoe. But like back yeah, back then I was like, holy shit, like, these are wild. Yeah. yeah, especially on a basketball shoe, especially on a LeBron James basketball shoe coming from like Cleveland, oh, yeah. where the cover color is burgundy. Like it's a big difference yeah. to get turquoise and pink coming from burgundy and gold. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, oh, yeah. I was going to give you a score of 21, but because you said no to pineapple on pizza, it's an automatic zero. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if you can make it up in the second half here. So we also have another game real quick, and it's it's convenient because I knew what your number one grail was because I'm psychic. Um, so it involves that. But our other game that we have is Alvin. How much is that? And essentially, all you have to do is tell me which between the two that I'm going to give you has the higher sold, last sold price on stock X in a size nine. Very simple. I'm going to give you two ish oh. sneakers. The first one I'm going to give you, sitting right behind you over your shoulder. Is he grabbing Marcus? <laughs> it actually is. A- Hey, Marcus. Hey, <laughs> what what that smile. <laughs> hey, He's buddy. ready. He's ready. All right, Marcus, here's the question. The last <laughs> sold price on stock X in a size nine dead stock versus Dior Air Jordan one high versus six pairs of LeBron eight South Beach. Which Ooh. one is the higher price between the two last sold size nine dead stock on stock X? You can see his brain working now. Well, we can see his brain working now. Yeah. It's processing. He's trying to figure out. I think, I think it'd be the, the Dior's. He still wants to go with the Dior. Dior. I think so. Is that your final answer? Yes, sir. All right. So as okay. we do, we go with the one you did not choose, and I'm going to tell you the price of six pairs of LeBron 8 South Beaches. The last sold price of one, $1,584. Ooh. You multiply that by six. Nine thousand five hundred and four dollars. Oh, are you confident still, Andy? Yep. Is this Canadian pricing? Canadian pricing. Yeah, I, I think I think it's gonna be close, but I think the Dior is maybe. He still is, so he's not confident anymore. Okay, <laughs> that was not a confident <laughs> answer. All right, the, the last sold price of a Dior Air Jordan One in a size nine dead stock Canadian dollars on stock X is nine thousand. 697 Ooh. you just barely edged out six pairs of south beaches andy if someone came to you with six pairs of south beaches for D- your diors are you taking it no because i wouldn't need six pairs that's a, that's a good answer <laughs> very good answer like, what we're gonna do with six pairs. <laughs> take a really cool instagram photo i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah and that's about it all right all right, so you made it up in the second half. You're uh, one for one here with 21 Gushins and how much is that? And before we get into uh, all your social media endeavors and all the stuff that you're working on, we want to know real quick, what got you into sneakers in the first place? Like, how did this uh, whole obsession start for you? Uh, honestly, I think for me, it was, like, it was high school. I uh, I went to Oakwood. You guys know where Oakwood is? Mm. Oakwood. Well, Oakwood by Sinclair. It's like Sinclair and Oakwood, but it's a pretty big high school in Toronto. It's uh, predominantly a black high school. So uh, all, I was first like token Asian guy hanging with, with you know, just a black crowd. So definitely influenced by the culture. And then, you know, back then, everyone always had fresh kicks. I ended up getting a job at Champ Sports at Yorkville while I was still in high school. That's so I'd be that guy. So like, I, yeah, you'd be leaving, you'd be leaving school with your, your, your actual your uniform on. Yeah. You let people know that you want to work at Champ and you were like the plug for everyone. So, uh, so yeah, I worked at Champs. I actually met my wife at Champs oh. at York. So we, we, our work, our working time overlapped by three months. So I worked there for three months with her, and then I ended up leaving, quitting, quitting, uh, and then kind of just moving on to something else. But uh, yeah, that's how it all started for me. Was just oh. you know, high school and the sneaker culture in high school, and working at Champs, and every paycheck, pretty much, literally like eighty percent of your paycheck went towards yeah. buying shoes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. I think a lot of people share that same story about working at a shoe yep. store in the high school and then all their money is gone immediately back to the place that they work. Uh, and that's exactly how they like it. That's why they hire high school kids. Um, 
What's uh? What's you guys all work? You guys all work at a, at a, at sneaker stores at some point. I worked at Full Locker. Alvin worked at Full Locker. Joel was smart and he got a, a real job. Um. <laughs> <laughs> In high school. <laughs> Any job is a real job as opposed to a sneaker retail job. Yeah, I worked at Full Locker. Me and Alvin worked at the same Full Locker. That's how me and Alvin met. Yeah. Um, oh damn! That's so I also, I, also, I also met my wife at Foot Locker. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, Alvin's my wife. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, so you've mentioned it a couple times on the podcast, but it's like nearly impossible to be a sneakerhead and get shoes for retail um, in 2020, 2021. It, just in the day and age that we're in, um, it's more difficult than ever. It's obviously not the same as when you worked at Champs in high school. We'll give, we'll say that for sure. But uh, what's keeping you into sneakers now? Like, why are you still doing this? It's so difficult. It's so expensive. But what's keeping you in the game now? I mean, I, I don't think, like, whether it gets more expensive or not will influence how I feel about sneakers. You know, it's just one of those things that, like, when I look back at high school, I got pictures of myself in high school wearing sneakers and just the feeling of getting new sneakers. Like, that, the price goes up like crazy. I still have sneakers now. Maybe I might buy less, but it won't change the way I feel towards sneakers and you know, it might change my, my, my purchasing patterns, but that's about it. I mean, I'm, I do pretty well, so I can still, if it does go up, I can still get shoes. But even now, ever since becoming a, a father, I, I kind of look out for him more than for myself. Cause I'm, I'm good. I'm good where I'm at right now in terms of sneakers. There's, there are certain shoes that I feel like I need to have, but, uh, but again, with my, with my stuff, my rotation, I rock everything. So after that, after a certain pair gets, you know, too beat up to my liking, honestly, pairs that are beat up, too beat up to my liking, I tell most people are probably like so great. Yeah. <laughs> so I usually just like I usually just give them to like like other family members, like my younger cousins. Like they always want certain type of shoes. I just, I just give it to them, donate it to them. They, they love it, and the shoes yeah. are still great. But just nice, for me, it's nice. like I, so for me, it's just certain things. Like certain if the shoe creases badly, or if like if that certain stain gets on the shoe, like I can't get it off. It's just certain things like that. I'm I'm pretty particular. It drives me crazy. And like I just give the shoe away afterwards. So that's the case. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. You seem like the type to be like. Honestly, this fucking lace won't come clean. I'm just gonna throw this. Get rid of this shoe. I can. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not for laces. Not for laces, but like for the actual shoe. Like the actual shoe. Yeah. If it's a really bad crease, and I have to look at the crease. It, it just drives me nuts. That's why he instituted his now trademarked pre-creasing technique. Pre-creasing. That's where. That's where it started. He was like, "I'm tired of giving away these expensive sneakers for free that I paid for. I need to figure out a way to wear them in better." Um, it's so funny because I, I I started posting about the whole pre-crease method, thinking that everyone knew and everyone did that, but apparently it's not really a thing. It's not really. Yeah, a I've never of... done that. Yeah, I might try. It. Yeah, Maybe but like not really. a pair, I'll try it. I literally do every single brand new pair that I have on my first wear. I always pre-crease them because if I don't like, I've I've gone through so many sneakers back in high school that you don't pre-crease them properly and you let you just let you know let it happen on its own. Sometimes you get the most ridiculous creases that just ruin the shoe. Mm. So I don't see why. Why don't you just piece it yourself a straight line right where your toes bend? Unless you have some 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 next level toes, then <laughs> can't help you with that. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I'll tell you all about my toes after the podcast, Andy. Don't you worry. <laughs> Since you asked. Um, all right. So we've mentioned it a couple times now, but you're a man of many hats. For those listening and are not familiar with Andy, he has his own personal page with a total of 144,000 followers. Try not to blush as I do this, Andy. Like, Try to like look away. Or I know you're a modest guy. Um, his clothing brand, Tiger Shark, also known as Tiger Shark, um, goes for <laughs> has a total of 126,000 followers. He has a sneaker feature page, Yeezy Rotation, which I'm sure all of you have seen, that is nearing half a million followers on Instagram. And he's also the co-founder of both Throne Toronto as well as the Shirk Studio in Toronto. Um, so he's a busy guy, to say the least. And he's also a father. That's like the biggest accolade of them all. He's a father mm-hmm. and husband, so congratulations. It's been it's under a, is it still under a year or is Marcus over a year? Just over, over a year just now. Just over a year. Yeah, just just over a year now. Yeah. I try to keep up. I'm trying. I'm trying my best to keep up with the dangs. I'm doing my best. You know, time time flies, especially during, during quarantine in 2020. I just I feel like he was just born and he's already a, a year over a year old now. But it's given you all this time to spend with him, which is like invaluable, <clears throat> right? Like you have nowhere to go. Hundred percent. Yeah. That was my positive like spit on everything. Was that you know. Where we're on lockdown, this is an opportunity for you to just like, you know, appreciate what you have, you know, and just like yeah. put all your energy towards that. So, it, yeah, yeah. I, I think quarantine is the perfect time. Like, you'll notice that dogs became more expensive during yeah. quarantine. 
Mm. Everyone was like, oh, this is the perfect time to get a dog. You know, and it, it's true. It's the best time to put all the energy towards raising yeah. a dog. And for me, it's like, if you're, if you're not in the stage of life where you're getting a dog, if you're at the stage of life where you're about to have a kid, it's, it's literally 20 times the perfect year to have a kid. It sucks in a sense that you can't socialize as much as you may have wanted to, but like, you know, in the first year or two years, they don't, they don't remember any of that stuff anyway. So it's, it's, mm. it's really more for you, I feel like, than yeah. it is for the actual baby. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, Andy saw how much dogs were costing in 2020. He's like, "Yo, Luna, come here for a second. Take some. Let me take some pictures for Kijiji. Hold on." <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So as we mentioned, um, we want to know a little bit about the whole social media stuff because you are dominating social media right now. So when did you kind of decide that you wanted to take social media like more seriously? Like when did you decide like, "Yo, this could be a thing," and like you really pursued it heavily? Uh, I think it was like, honestly, I've, I've been around in the whole social media and like sneaker thing for like at least six years now, I think. I think it honestly just, yeah, yeah, yeah at least six years. But it, it started off with just me taking pictures of like my shoes and then posting it. I literally didn't know how Instagram really worked back then. <laughs> I like, I looked, looked up hashtags. I did hashtag sneaker. And one of the first tags that came up was like sneaker shouts, which is a, uh, an Instagram page that like, features sneakers and they ended up posting my shoe and I like, gained like 50 followers. Like, back then, my page had like 300 followers. It was like just a personal page. Your typical Asian male Instagram page <laughs> consists of pictures of your car, pictures of food, pictures of your animals, and yep. the the random selfie here and there. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> I got featured. I got, gained like 50 followers. Like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. I got some followers. Let me try, let me just show off some more of my shoes and figure out what other pages that do this feature stuff. And I did it. And back, you know, again, six, but six plus years ago, if you got a feature from like a big sneaker page, so different. You'd literally, then. you'd gain like five, something. If Jordan's Daily or Jordan Depot, Sneaker Files, Sneak Gallery, Kicks on Fire, if they ever featured you six plus years ago, you yeah. gained five hundred to a thousand followers within twenty four hours. They feature you today, you'll be lucky if you gain five to ten. Yeah. Honestly, if someone even, even with their two point five yeah. million. <laughs> yeah even with the yeah. 2.5 it's just you know back then not everyone was doing that and now it's just so diluted that you know it's like why bother following this guy that shows his feet or his shoes when there's literally like 10,000 people that do it and that feel like do it better so like, yeah. yeah that's kind of how it all started with me like, I just I guess it was just timing you know like I don't look at my my stuff as like holy it's huge or I don't look at myself as a big Instagram like, <clears throat> influencer or anything like that I kind of just look at myself as just a regular guy who loves sneakers and like I happen to have a, a pretty sizable following. And I think the, the, the best thing about that is for, for me, really, instead of just like, you know, showing that off and have a big following, it's really just like my, my ability to connect with my actual following, with the people that do follow me. I feel like I actually have a pretty good influence over the ones that actually follow me because people that follow me for some time have actually watched me progress from this regular guy who worked at the bank at nine to five to the guy that three years ago just pretty much works from home and works from wherever he and kind of sets his own schedule and answers to only himself you know like i think that's like you know that that's kind of inspirational to some people that are kind of stuck in like their regular nine to five that kind of want to do something different and i feel like that's probably a reason why a lot of people follow me in addition to like obviously the stuff that i, I show like the shoes and like the lifestyle and whatnot but um i think for me it's like my page transitioned from like just showing sneakers to trying to like motivate people inspire people and then as of late in the last year, it's really just to like entertain and make people laugh because in real life, I'm pretty goofy. And I just feel like, you know, to really make yourself different from every other page you see on Instagram, you really have to show people your true self. That's why people on that, that do YouTube do so well. I never hop on the YouTube train. Which is like, I don't know, I kind of I regret that. I didn't hop on the YouTube train, but it's just too much work to edit. Like, like in the last five years, like when I started Tiger Shark, it's shark, not spurk. <laughs> so yeah, I so the whole idea behind Tiger Shark is that you flip, you know, I couldn't copyright Tiger Shark, so obviously I flipped the A, uh, the A to V, and people still call it Tiger Shark. Every once in a while, I go like the post office to pick up an item or something, like a return or something, and the person is really foreign. They'll be like, uh, "Yeah, this is a Tiger Shark." Burk. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> just butcher, just butcher it completely. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like the window for me to get on YouTube was probably three, four years ago. But during that time of three, four years ago, that's when my brand was really, really taking off. And I feel like no one really knows how well that brand actually did. But it was a big, big factor in like my ability to quit my job. And uh, but yeah, it, 
but so I'm not just kind of running off course. The reason, the reason why I kind of got started was, you know, just thinking of my shoes, getting featured, growing, and then eventually realizing that I can actually, you know, uh, monetize it. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, is this kind of around the same time you decided to start uh, Yeezy Rotation? So once again, for everyone listening, Yeezy Rotation is, like you mentioned, all those other like Jordan Depot, Sneaker Files, all those places. It's a similar to that. And it was one of the first that I can remember, like Yeezy specific um, sneaker feature pages. Is that kind of the same, like the same idea? Like you saw all these other people doing it. So you're like, why not me? Yeah, you know what? I think, I think that I was the second uh, ever easy feature page that existed on Instagram. I think the first one, I got to give credit to uh, my boy Vivian Frank, who started, uh, him and someone else together started uh, Yeezy Talk Worldwide. Mm. I think they may have fallen off. They kind of stopped. I mean, uh, Yeezy Rotation has kind of fallen off in the last year. I just haven't been active on that account. Uh, even though the followers are still there, just because I've been too busy doing other things and kind of just focusing on my own personal life. Uh, but yeah, I, the way it all started initially was I, I had a page certified shot. Um, which is my original page, my personal page. It eventually grew to like 80,000 followers. And I was like, hey, why don't I go from the guy that's being featured to the guy that features people? You know, that way I, I can't post new shoes every single day. I don't have that many shoes to flex every single day. Let me just, you know, turn this into a feature page and start freshing it on a personal. So I just literally added an S to the end of that that handle of certified shot. It became certified shots, which was perfect because, you know, just the way the, the play on the word and just like, you know, transitioning over to a feature page. And I just started started fresh again with certified shot as my personal. And then I use that to just feature. It was back then it was literally all about Jordan. No one cared about Adidas at all. So it was really I was just featuring on certified shots, primarily Jordans. And then Kanye West did a whole switch to, to Adidas. And I saw I saw that there was an opportunity here to like, you know, start a new feature page that was just strictly easy. And so I did the whole uh, easy rotation uh, after Easy Talk Worldwide. And I used certified shots to kind of funnel my followers that are, if anyone like was interested in easy news to kind of go over there. And so it helped, it helped kind of grow that page pretty quickly. And then when certified shots actually reached about, I think 250,000 followers, someone actually offered me $20,000 for the page. Holy crap. And, and I, yeah, back then I wasn't like, I was still working at the bank. So I had like, like my salary was like about 50, 50, $60,000 a year. So when someone offered me, you know, $20,000, I'm like, fuck yeah, like, I'm, I'm going to take that. You know, like, Absolutely. I mean, obviously, like, back, honestly, back then, the value they were getting from $20,000 for that page, it's definitely worth it because it takes a lot of time and effort to build a page into a quarter million followers of real followers. And in addition to that, it's like, you know, you can make that $20,000 back if you know what you're doing. Yeah. If you're just a random person that just buys a page, you, it'll probably, it might go to shit. But I don't, I don't know what's happening with the page now, but the guy, he offered me $20,000. So I sold the page. And I just kind of, I used, and I actually ended up using Easy Rotation to start a new page called Fit Rotation, which is all, all about outfits, streetwear, outfits, and sneakers. And that, at some point, grew to about 280,000 followers, and I ended up selling that page for $15,000. So I kind oh, of flipping, oh, just flipping pages. Flipping I've actually pages. probably moved, <laughs> I've probably moved at least, at least, uh, I think at least 10, 10 to 15 Instagram handles. Yeah. That's a good, like, that's a profession. Like, literally, they should have a school class just just flipping Instagram pages. Because... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's easy, but that's, like, a dope, like, I'm uh, 100% it's not easy because everyone would do it. But, like, that's incredible. Like, holy shit. Like, we're out here trying. Yeah, also, uh, also like, uh, I think like sometime about, like, around, like, four years ago, I, I had a contact that worked within Facebook. And this is so illegal, but it's this is so like done now that I can probably talk about it and it's probably not a problem. You but, hope so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is not a problem. He, he, he's already, he already got fired, so it's okay. Uh, basically, uh, you could pay him a thousand dollars, and he would. So you can take over inactive accounts, account handles. That's how I was able to get the name certified and get that name originally. So my name was originally certified shot, and then you can you can. If you work at Facebook and Instagram, you can set up, submit a request to take over an inactive account. So the name certified was just some random account had like 500 followers, had not had a post on it for like over three years. There's like nothing on it. So I paid the guy $1,000 and sent, sent the request through and I ended up getting a name for it. So he did this. I don't know, he's taken because I ended up buying like six names off of him. I ended up buying Chosen off of him, which I sold to Tetra. 
had her oh, own children yeah. now. Yeah, like um, I bought a bunch of names, just random random things I could use for, like businesses. Uh, Tiger Shark and like and like Throne Toronto, the two brands that I that I that I own right now. Those are the only ones that were shared on Instagram. But I have got I've gone through at least ten different businesses through Instagram that I just closed down because they weren't profitable enough. Because Tiger Shark was, that, that, that this, this is what this is where people don't understand. Tiger Shark was doing so well at one point that it just didn't make as certain brands that were certain companies that were making ten thousand dollars profit per month that I closed because it didn't make sense to put any attention to those brands because Tiger Shark was doing over a hundred. Cool. That's, so, uh, and yeah, this, so there's, and there's a lot of page flipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of opportunity. Honestly, like for me, it's not, I, I, when people ask me what I do for a living, I have all these different titles. I can kind of say I, you know, I manage this, 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 and this. But like, what I actually do on a day to day basis, or what I actually do for like, you know, for like income, sometimes it's like it's really just like a, it's just like a hustle, just finding finding different ways to capitalize on opportunities and. You know, it might be sell. I, I don't sell pages consistently, but every once in a while, in the last six years, I've sold at least fifteen pages. You know, and some of them go as high as twenty thousand dollars. People, some of some football player offered me uh, like twenty grand for my certified handle. The only issue is you can't give the handle away on its own. Mm. You, have, you have to give your whole page with your following because the moment you change, there's there's bots that are set to actually swoop up names, oh. OG names. So certified is considered an OG name. Any one word. Uh, handle on Instagram is considered an OG name. So if you have an OG name and you change your name to something else, even for a split second, I think they changed, they may have changed that now, but if you change it, then this bot will pick up that name and just steal it. So you can't just, you can't swap with someone that easily anymore. But now they have this whole thing in place that you switch, if you switch your name, you can get it back within 30 days or some or 14 days or some shit. I haven't tried it for a long time, but you can get it back apparently. But, uh, but I don't know if you can actually give it to someone right away. If, like if they, anyone... Instagram will hold that name if anyone approaches you and says, yo, I really love the name Canada Got Soul and I want to purchase an Instagram name, send them our, we will, 20 grand, two grand. Who has two grand? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a pair of shoes even, maybe. Like, <laughs> um, So you clearly kind of have an idea what you're doing on social media that's just to say the least what are some keys to succeeding and growing a social media page presence whatever so i mean six years ago you could do it organically like through features good content just you know hashtags and just being active you know there's so many different techniques you can use like you can back then people used to follow unfollow you can follow mm, certain yeah. amount of people every like 10 minutes and just once they follow you back after a little while you can go on a purge and just unfollow everyone and you might retain some of that uh, and like obviously getting featured back then was huge, but now nowadays with it, honestly the algorithm hurt a lot of people, myself included. The reason why I'm not so super active on like easy rotation anymore because the algorithm hurt really badly to the point where it's like I'm, you know I don't put so much energy into it because I'm just so much so to do other things. But uh, these days, honestly, uh, it's like giveaways. You do giveaways, like you do joint giveaways. Like those I found the most effective ways of growing at this point where you kind of either do a collab with someone else that has a big following and you guys split the cost of a shoe or you find a sponsor to put up the shoe and you have to follow the people involved and you know, drop a comment, comment, tag a friend or something to, to, to win. Those are the, pretty much the biggest, the quickest ways to grow. But retention is really hard if your content's bad. That's 100% yeah. true. Yeah, you can't just tell people to follow you if you have really shitty content. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you think you would have been as successful if you tried to start all this in 2020? Like if you were just fresh, like, because it's now so diluted, like you mentioned, do you think it would have still been as successful and uh, prosperous for you Definitely if you tried not. starting now? No? Definitely not. In terms of the brand, 100% no, because the brand had to, had to do a lot of like, ti- like luck with timing as well. Because uh, honestly, starting clothing brands is like one of the most competitive things on Instagram, it's like everyone has a clothing brand and yep. literally 99% of them fail. So I think doing it now is definitely a lot harder, but it doesn't mean it can't be done. It can be done, but it just requires a lot of money for marketing. 100%. Mm. Um, so we'll get into the clothing brand now because it is incredibly interesting. Like you said, it's been incredibly lucrative for you. So first of all, congratulations. It's obviously the latest congratulations ever because you started it six years ago, but uh, congratulations nonetheless. <laughs> um, but uh, so what were some things you learned and uh, learned when you were like kind of starting up the brand? Like when you were first getting into it, like what did you kind of learn as you were getting going? 
I mean, I, I, I literally started that brand from scratch without knowing anything about doing clothing at all. I initially, before that brand started, I actually had a, had a phone case company that sold uh, like sneaker sneaker phone cases. I had like the sole of the shoe. Yeah. And then we transitioned over to basketball uh, phone cases. And that business did super, super well for about a year. And then it actually ended up getting shut down by the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag ban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got shut down by the NBA, so I had to stop that. But that did it did very well, made a good amount of money. So I was able to use that kind of investment starting the whole clothing side of things and just learn using what I learned in terms of like marketing and like pay, paying influencers or paying feature pages to kind of post your stuff. And then I started the clothing brand. I, I uh it's funny because you if you guys know you guys know about Peace Collective. Mm-hmm. Peace mm-hmm. Collective. So when I when my when my when my uh phone case business got closed by uh the NBA. I uh, partnered up with Peace Collective and we were going to start a clothing company together called, uh, it was called, I don't remember what it was. It was something basketball related. Hoop, it was called Hoop Dreams. Hoop, Hoop Dreams, Dreams Collective is what it was. Yeah. So we actually ended up putting everything together, the logo, the designs, everything like that. And then uh, a big famous baseball player ended up wearing one of the Peace Collective like hoodies or t-shirts that saying Toronto versus everyone. And then their, their brand just took off. Like it just, it went insane. They had a crazy amount of orders. And because of that, we had to put our business on hold. But because I was already kind of learning about the whole process of you know manufacturing and designing and decorating clothing that I started, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to wait for these guys. I'm going to just do my own thing. And that's when I started Tiger yeah, yeah. Shark. And originally the whole idea was that I need to come up with a logo that's like catchy and kind of cool. And I find out a lot of like big brands, especially in streetwear, usually do well with like an animal mascot. I was looking at like OVO. OVO had the owl. So when I actually made the like, I was thinking about an animal. I'm like, I'm like I need to like, have like a fierce animal. You don't have like something like, eternal or something like that. <laughs> so like, I'm like, you have like Lacoste has like the alligator. I don't know, like yeah. something like something that's cool, you know. So like, I'm like, I thought you know, it'd be, it'd be cool to have like a, have like a tiger, or you know, it'd also be cool to have like a shark. I'm like, what if, what if, what if I do like a tiger shark? Like that's kind of cool. it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. And like the whole thing about the tiger shark is that it's like one of the most like it's like one of the most aggressive like shark breeds out there species out there like they really eat anything that's like that's in the ocean so i thought you know like the whole idea was that like you know this whole business of mine got closed down by the nba but i so badly want to be successful because i got a nice little taste of success from that initial business because it did so so well hence why i got closed with the nba but i had this drive within me that i I was going to do whatever it took to you know get back to that point of making that kind of money and that's where the whole thing, you know, I related to the whole idea of the tiger shark is just relentless when it comes to like finding prey, finding food, surviving, climbing to the top of the food chain. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to use that, you know, and I'm going to channel that and kind of start the brand that way. And then I just started off initially with just buying blank hoodies and just decorating them and selling them. And then one thing led to another. I literally, my first job, I literally had 40 t-shirts. No one even knew how many pieces I had. 40 t-shirts. I, I promoted it through my Instagram account. I, I managed to grow. Back then, Instagram was still kind of good, so you can you can you can you can grow your following pretty well. So, like, in a in a month of promoting the, the Tiger Shark Instagram, I grew 10,000 followers before the brand launched. And when I launched the brand, I literally to 10,000 fo- active followers that followed followed within the last 10 uh, within the last month. I only had 40 t-shirts that were available <laughs> to purchase and no one had any idea. So I dropped those 40 t-shirts and they sold out right away. And my, my first set was like literally three t-shirts in three different colors uh, that had a, a shark on it. And then three t-shirts in three different colors that had a tiger on it. And I dropped one per week, only 40 pieces. And it sold out within the two minutes, every single drop. And then it literally from that point on, like this is like five and a half years ago, from that point on, I did one or two releases every single Thursday for five and a half years straight Holy up until like crap. up until up until six months ago but for five years straight i did that and it you know it just that's where like the majority of my income kind of came from that's uh Crazy. i don't even know that's supreme level bro like, yeah, every I mean, not, not even not even not thursday. even close but. Every, every thursday though like that's bro yeah. we're trying to do merch drops now and we're like yeah we could do like three this year i think and we'll be good um <laughs> <laughs> What the, well, that's the thing. Like when you, it, it, people, it's not. It's not like. I mean, it is hard to do, but it's not. It doesn't take as much as people think to make really good money when it comes to moving merch. Because it's like, you know, I start off with forty pieces. I never let it get past one hundred and fifty because I still want it to be relatively limited. There was a certain point where I used to, used to get a lot of emails, people saying, "Yo, like I want this piece, but like it's sold out." Like, why do you guys position your 
company this way that you just make stuff and it sells out and like people just like take L's, you know? So I started making a little bit more, but like some like for a good chunk of the, like like the time that the business was operating, uh, I used to do like a hundred pieces. So I would do two drops every Thursday, like usually a hoodie and a pair of joggers, and there'd be a hundred pieces of each, and they would still sell out. But a hundred pieces is really, you know, that's two hundred pieces in total, but like that's not gonna take two hundred orders. That's that's gonna take like maybe a hundred and 20 orders because some people will buy two pieces they'll buy the mm-hmm. pants and the hoodie yeah. you know and like if you have a, a page that has like you know thirty thousand followers and you only need 120 orders every thursday it's not it's not that like unattainable, unattainable. yeah <clears throat> but the thing is 100 if you sell if you sell 200 pieces the average price is like you know 80 dollars that's sixteen thousand dollars that you make every single thursday yeah so that's how you know, I've, I've been doing that for over five years. And that's what, that's where a lot of my success kind of came from with Tiger Shark. Cause after the first year of doing those shirts, like, you know, I had companies reach out to me saying, Hey, we want to manufacture your stuff and do it cut and sew. And like, you don't need to buy, you know, wholesale t-shirts and decorate them. Maybe we'll just make it from scratch. So now everything that we do now since like four years ago has been completely cut and sewn from scratch. You're not buying a shirt that you, that you can buy anywhere else. Yeah. It's wholesale. It's really made from, from scratch. This guy nice. couldn't do like twelve times five, but he did like eighty <laughs> times sixteen um, times. I had the, cal- <laughs> had the calculator ready. <laughs> this guy's literally the talking and right typing time. it into the calculator. <laughs> He's like, "How much did I make?" <laughs> what? Um. So we know that in 2020, 2021, and just in the current landscape now, like you said, everyone's doing a clothing brand, and people really bounce around to like what's incredibly trendy right now, whether it be off white, supreme, bape, back and forth. Like fear of God essentials is huge right now, just like that kind of thing. V loan was huge for a while, like whatever. Um, yeah. In a time where it's people bouncing around to whatever's hot, 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 how do you kind of like stay relevant? And you said every Thursday, which is incredibly um, impressive. I didn't know that. How do you make sure you're yeah. staying relevant and fresh um, in a time when people are just looking for like the newest hypest shit? Yeah. Well, in the last in the last year, it hasn't been every single Thursday just because of COVID, manufacturing, like issues with manufacturing, and just like just a lot of uncertainty with like you know buying patterns and whatnot. Uh, now it's just like I'll make an, an invoice or I'll, I'll make a purchase order and I'll have like maybe ten different styles get made. And they'll arrive and then when they arrive i'll promote them and drop them one one per week for like you know 10 weeks straight and then after that runs out i'll work on the next purchase order and they kind of do it that way so it's not as consistent as it used to be just because of you know how hectic my life has been and just like with markets and everything else and last year it has changed but even for me like i don't think i'm really competing with those brands at all like i'm like those brands are all again well, all those hype brands the stuff that i make is really it's not i don't think on the same lines of those like Pricing wise, my prices are kind of up there too. Like a hoodie is like a hundred dollars, eighty to hundred dollars US, and a pair of uh, pants usually about sixty, seventy dollars US. So like, pricing isn't so far off some of those brands. Uh, but I think for me, it's like I, I like to make stuff that I would wear personally. Like I used to design and try to design for like what the hype piece might like. You know, I mean, I myself, I am a hype piece to some degree. So I mean, I do like wearing a lot of kind of plain casual things. But like a lot of stuff that I design these days now is just things that I would personally wear. So I just designed that way. And things that I personally would wear usually fall in line with some of the high piece stuff, except just yeah. not so, so much crazy branding anymore, you know? So again, you don't need to sell that many orders to make good money, you know, in this industry. I mean, if you want to make it big, like Supreme and those big brands, and yeah, you have to make two big numbers, but you could literally, with a, with a following that I have, I could make a living and do really well for myself just even just even if it's just 100 orders per week you know 100 percent um oh, yeah. well that was informative for me thank you but uh so before we go um first of all we're starting a website so i'm going to write all these tips down but um what uh <laughs> give us like three so obviously it's in you now it's been in you for a long time Entre- entrepreneurship um you want to be your own boss you want to s- bounce around do everything you want to diversify your portfolio three tips for young entrepreneurs, young people who want to start an Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is. Um, three quick tips for people who kind of want to get into this, um, kind of do what you're doing. What would you say to them? Three tips. Um, well, honestly, when, when it comes to doing anything on social media, these days, you need to have money. So I would say save, save your money. So, I mean, 
even if it's a young person that's like in school or whatever, if you're working part time, if you want to start some sort of business, save your money, save as much money as you can, because when it comes to, and also it is, this is actually a big one. I just thought of that. You need to make sure that the people that are looking at your stuff or the people that, that are, are helping you along the way, give you honest, honest, brutally honest opinion, uh, feedback, because <laughs> if you make something that's trash and you have a bunch of years surrounded by a bunch of yes men, they tell you that it's good. And that's, that's not helpful. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. I think a lot of people don't have the heart to tell you that it's bad. Even if you think that it's good, it might still be bad. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like you need yeah. to make sure that you have, that you're a hundred percent confident in your product. Cause once you know, once you have a product that you know you could sell, you can market, then it, then you put all the money into marketing that product. But if, until you know that, and it's really hard to know sometimes, you know, so you have to really dig deep and figure out, you know, if your if your if your product is actually something that you can actually move, whether it's clothing, whether it's uh, you know, I don't know, accessories or whatnot. Uh, yeah, make sure you know, uh, save, save money, of course, was one I mentioned earlier, and um, I think I think just make sure that you are 100% committed to doing whatever it is you plan on doing. I feel like a lot of people want to be successful and you know they want to start a brand they want to become a reseller or they want to do this or they want to do that but very few people actually follow through and actually put the work and put the time into actually figuring out what to do i feel like with me it one key thing that's made me very successful that if it's something i don't know how to do i will literally go on youtube i will go on google i will learn how to do that and do it myself and that's like that, that could you know be a big factor in separating people that make it and people that don't make it is your drive. It's, it's the drive. It's really what it is. Like I have, if I have a drive to do something, I'm, I'm going to do it. I don't know anything about like cars and and like you know doing working on cars. But I just recently bought the M3 and I literally did all like I did a bunch of shit that when I brought it into like the shop, they're like, you did all that yourself? And that's, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, I literally went to Canadian Tire. <laughs> I, 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 I I bought a Jack. Jack the car up, did the mods, return the jack. <laughs> Lord knows I keep that jack. <laughs> Lord knows I keep that jack. That's that's his that third jack tip. Term. Buy and then return <laughs> yeah. when you're done. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Work smart. <laughs> Work, there you go. And it doesn't come easy. Work smart, but it don't come easy. Um, Andy, yeah. man, this was dope. It was like I really appreciate you coming. This was really cool, really informative. Hopefully, it helps um, because, like we said, everybody and their mom now wants to start their own business, which is amazing. Um, so they need people to look to for advice. So thank you, Andy. This was dope. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, man. Um, wherever appreciate you guys, you of course, wherever you're taking in the episode, please leave a comment, review, follow, and or subscribe. Make sure you catch uh, check out CanadaGotSold.ca to shop the latest CGS merch. Peep the YouTube for our latest videos and check out CGS Talk on Facebook to chop it up with us of course do not forget to use hashtag canada got soul on instagram for a feature i have been lawrence hopkins you can find me at l doggy styles on instagram woof i'm joel hernandez you can find me at joe dooney j-o underscore d three o's n-e-y my name is alvin quincy and you can find me at m-i-s-t-e-r-q and then mark all right everybody sit back while andy tells us all the places we can find him (laughs) <laughs> you can pretty much only find me on instagram under the handle certified thanks for having me guys of course man thank yeah, you man. andy and thank you for listening to us talk about sneakers for 153 episodes and please remember to rock your kicks this has been true to size we have been cgs and andy dang and we are out hey. Peace. Peace. That was dope, bro. Thank you. That was really fun. That no, really thanks, yeah, that, 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 that was really fun. That was really good. Yeah, I hope it didn't run too long for you guys. No, it was good. No, it was perfect, We have bro. no time limits. <laughs>